we'll see what they do over the next week. Uh, you know, because I, I, I don't think the price will be low by the time the chains launch. Um, the pair of chains launch, I think the price will be up a little bit. Um, but just to give it more TVL, but that's my personal opinion. Well, it has to go up, doesn't it? You know, because you got to pay for these pair of chains with Polkadot. A lot of people are going to be buying a Polkadot over the next couple of weeks. I have the crowd loans that I'm excited to be a part of, uh, mainly Moonbeam. So, like, there, there's, I think there are a lot of fortunes will be made if you're going to be putting Polkadot into these crowd loans, um, if you're in it with the right, the right company and project. That is true. I had, I've been trying to get. Uh... I've been trying to talk to Scott a little bit about Moonbeam just because, like, uh, what I've seen happen with Moon River um, and the way it took off from the Kusama side, it was just, it was, I, I'm just, I, I, I was like, I've seen that crowd loan happen and I didn't get involved because I was like, I don't want to get anything involved with anything with the name Moon in it, right? And then when it did come out, I was like, what? <laughs> like, I think it listed originally for five dollars in pre like uh, the pre sale, and then at seventy five dollars when it hit KuCoin, and and now it's around uh, three. Even with the pullback right now, I think it's around six three sixty eight. So uh, it's been having some amazing, amazing growth since it came out. I was like, why did it go quiet for a second? Hey, Vibe, and I sent you a poster for uh, Blockcast as well. I, I think because you sent me something, my whole thing just, like, blacked out. Everything, like, everything went mute for a second. We got Mr. Crypto in here as well, I see. Yo, good morning, good afternoon, boys. How are y'all doing today? Excellent, oh, man. man. How so, are you? So, somebody, somebody has shit, man. You can hear it in his voice. <laughs> 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 Yo, no cap, no cap. You can tell anybody who has shit bags because, like, they're like they're in all the spaces today, like, and they're extra excited. Like, yo, what's up, guys? How y'all doing today? Like, <laughs> it's all about there. Safe Moon too. Is doing really good too, which I love too. Yeah, man, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm excited. I, I'm excited for Safe Moon, man. I, I think, uh, you know, like I'm not gonna lie, you know, like I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty honest dude. You know, I got into Safe Moon at the all time high. And then uh, I lost a big, a big amount of money that I didn't want to lose, and I was able to recover the money back. You know, not with Safe Moon, but uh, I was a little bit, you know, I was a little mad at Safe Moon for a little bit. But you know what? It really taught me like one of the best lessons ever, which was the DD. You do your own due diligence. Like when I invested into that company, I, I didn't even know to, like if they had a website or not. You know, so like, but this was my start in cryptocurrency. I didn't care. I was only Bitcoin before then. I didn't care about anything except Bitcoin. If it wasn't Bitcoin, I didn't care about it. Um, so it ended up making me lose uh, some money. And I was like, you know what? Now I got to do my own due diligence about BSC and, you know, smart contracts and, and things that I did on the uh, ER, well, ER2 back then. But uh, it just made you do your due diligence. And now I'm, I'm very thankful. Like, hey, man, I'm more power to him. I'm, I'm like, what if, let's go to the moon. <laughs> Definitely. Guys, imagine if we, if, you, if we form a party on Polka Party platform. And just start invest in those meme coins together. And we have like ten thousand members. Everyone puts like ten euros in it or whatever. We have so much amount of money to make together. And that's very that's very interesting. Now, Tim, I want you to come back up. And we got a couple people in the room. I, and now that he brought up the little micro, the party, the uh, the crowd. Well, I don't want to call them crowd loans, but the little, the little micro parties. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Poker Party, uh, we're building on a protocol that um, allows people to invest in, in uh, invest together for the first time ever, uh, based off of uh, government governance votes on the blockchain. So one of the big problems is say that uh, Laga, Laga and I were talking on the phone last night, and we decided that we're going to buy Shiba Inu token. And uh, I buy the thirty grand. Laga buys. 20 grand and uh, Laga makes a decent amount of money and, and he sells. And, and th th these, uh, these price impacts are more noticeable on micro caps. But if he sold 25,000 on a liquidity, uh, on a token that had liquidity of like 500 to $600,000, the price impact on that is going to be like pretty strong. Um, and so in essence, we're competing against one another 
in order to take gains in this space. So if Laga sells before me, I'm going to, my gains are going to be cut. But if I sell before Laga, um, his gains are going to be cut. Now with this group finance application that we've built, um, you'll be able to do those things together. So it creates like a uh, strength for the little guy. So VCs, they're able to move large amounts of funds um, synonymously, creating big uh, shakes in the market. Uh, we've all seen like front running bots who put in like three, five ETH before someone buys, uh, and gives them a bad price and takes the profit off the top. Not everybody has the opportunity or the resources to be able to compete with uh, someone that has uh, that kind of bot running or someone that has $100,000 worth of a token that they could dump a price with. Um, so the idea that we kind of nurtured was, what if we put everybody on an even playing field and gave these small wallets the same um, amount of power that these large wallets have by building a shared governance wallet that people have to vote on in order to make transactions approved or declined. So because of that, anyone cre can create a VC fund, anyone can create a hedge fund, anyone can amass wealth into um, group finance or group thinking. And uh, one of our, our, our surveys, our studies of how this could be beneficial was back when uh, AMC and Nokia, uh, GameStop all had their, their moon shows earlier this year. If all that money was inside of one conglomerate or a hedge fund, it would have been, it would have been one of the largest hedge funds in, in, uh, in, on the stock exchange. Um, and if that money was moving with one, one central unit controlling it and being organized with it, um, it would be so strong. Uh, it would be a force to be reckoned with. So why not create a protocol where anybody can do that on the blockchain? So I guess that's my, my, my pitch of it. Yeah, man. So it's basically like, you know, just pulling loans together uh, as a community and being able to, you know, invest in different projects. So I, I really like that idea, man. It kind of like it reminds me of pair chains and um, those things. Does anybody know... Um, does anybody know uh, a little bit more about the Shibarium or Shibarium? I'm not, I don't know if I'm saying that right. If anybody in here uh, is, if, if you want to come up and talk about it, I'd love to hear a little bit more about it. No, not that, that I'm aware of. I haven't really done any research on that yet. I should, though, too. All right, you guys gave me some homework. I guess I'll do my homework. No big deal. <laughs> what I would really like, for, what what would, what I think would be super funny with Shiba is if Vitalik just logged into his wallet and just sold. <laughs> that wouldn't be really cool. <laughs> I mean, it'd give me a great. I thought he donated. Didn't, didn't Vitalik burn already burnt a, a lot of amount of uh, Shiba Inu tokens? I think all of it. I yeah. Thought. Oh, yeah. I read an article yeah, about it. He yeah, bought. He, he sold all of his positions. To India. Not sold, he, but he burned. He burned. He burned forty-eight percent, uh, ninety-eight percent of it, and two percent went to India uh, for COVID relief. Really. Yeah, yeah. He burned six billion dollars worth of Shiba tokens. So what a good guy. Yeah, I, 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 they're lucky. I think I would have just. Uh... <laughs> I would have been like you. I would have had me a little backdoor key. I'd have me a little key and be like, yeah, man, you just wait. <laughs> Uh, I've been like six billion, <laughs> six billion dollars. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> and I see uh, Jen. You, you just popped in the room. If you want to come up, I can bring you up as a speaker as well. Always good to hear your voice and hear women in the uh, crypto space come up. Yo, Bobman, are you heading to Miami for the Crypto Expo this year? Yes, sir. I will be there. Oh yeah, I'll see you there, yes, my man. Sir. I got a booth. There. Uh, you do. That'll yeah. Be super, yeah, that's super dope, man. Uh, and I'll, I'll take you guys. I'll take you guys by some of the restaurants and uh, places that I told you guys about a couple months ago that my friends on down there. So oh, we can, heck. So we can do some lunches, some party. brunches, whatever we want to do. Heck yeah, I'm ready. And uh, how's the, how's the marketplace been since you guys uh, released the marketplace, uh, Mr. Crypto? Uh, bro, it's been amazing. We've been having a lot of different artists come up, actually. Puny Bunny was an artist on the open sea and we <laughs> we we brought her over to the dark side. <laughs> oh nice man. Okay. She sold most of her work that she put up that day. So I was mm -hmm. very excited to, you know, help her with that. And you know, everybody's loving the the cheap gas fees on our side. And you know, everybody's familiar with it. So our end goal by November is to integrate Safe Moon, 
uh, Baby Doge, Floki, and Feg as a form of payment in our platform. Um, nice. So we will be able to, you know, grab a big chunk of those communities that are into NFTs and allow them to pay using their cryptocurrency. So I'm excited, man. I'm very excited. And we have successfully uh, been able to sell NFTs from Refinable on our marketplace. And then in return, we got paid in CBT. So, yeah, nice. we're, we're breaking it, man. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, man I, I, I'm not going to lie. I went over I went over to you guys. Uh, I went over to your marketplace because uh, some, somebody on my team asked me to, you know, do some more due diligence on your marketplace and, you know, all that good stuff. Because we work as a team and we try to vet everything that uh, comes across our way or any AMAs that we do. We try to follow back up a, a month or two later and, and can go back and see how the projects are doing. Um, we just do our own little due diligence. And I will say it was it was definitely user friendly. Like, it, and, and I'm not like big on NFTs. I'm not going to sit over here and act like I own, you know, 30 punks or anything like but it was it was simple for me to get around i went to make a transaction on it it was easy it was smooth it was pretty easy to connect to my wallet it was it was simple man so i, I will give you guys that uh, i want to tell you guys congratulations on that and keep pushing for it thank you so much my man that does mean a lot you know that's one of the things that does keep us going forward that people give us good feedback you know saying how simple it is to use and people love the fact that it's cheap you know you don't have to spend 150 dollars on gas to be able to get a you know a ten dollar NFT, so uh, you know we're making uh, you know we're making progress, and you know as we uh, continue growing, we will continue to improve the website. So you know our final version is not there yet, so we'll continue to uh, you know improve as as we move along. So thank you so much, man. That does mean a lot. Appreciate that. Nope. No problem at all. Hey, Gene, you got anything you want to talk about today? Geez, I'm not sure. I am with everybody else. I'm just watching the market quite tightly. Uh, my project is busy, busy, busy. Um, I was uh, taking in a bunch of different meetings. I'm doing a bunch of integrations to try and do a lot of cross-chain movement. So uh, trying to work on development, building out more developers. So if anyone on here is listening and has development background, DM me. I am looking to build out a larger team than I currently have on many projects. So uh, whether you're front or back or just Web3 integration specialist, just give me a, a holler. Otherwise, I'm like you, like everyone else, just checking the market out, seeing what the weather's like. How about you guys? Yeah, man. Um, me, I, I, me personally, I, I looked at the market today and, you know, like I'm one of those guys, man, when I wake up and I see red, I'm, I'm like happy, right? Like, <laughs> I'm like, man, it was some things that I missed. It was some things, and I, and I don't know why. I woke up fucking super early and I went to bed super late because last night I was waiting for polka dot dick uh hit the all-time high um, because I knew it was going to have a good a good retest after the all-time high. So I was like, it was a point that I wanted to acquire. I, like, I'm trying to acquire, like, a few thousand, few thousand polka dots, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm almost to my goal. So I want to catch the next dip, and I'm going to go ahead and get there. And so I waited up, waited up, and it was like 2.30 in the morning, and I could not stay up any longer, and it was, like, right there at it. And then I woke, went to sleep, and I woke up. And it was like five thirty six o'clock this morning, and the market was exactly where I needed it to be. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm like excited, and then like the only thing I haven't dreamed today is shib, and it's up like crazy, like a forty percent, man. And, and it's like it feels really good. It's like a good day on the market. Like I was, I was able to buy a lot of things this morning. Like uh, I, I went ahead and got a couple, uh, some more Harmony One, which is not a financial advice, or and I picked up some more, uh, some more polka dot to get to my my goal. So we had a similar morning. That's what I would say to you. I did the exact same thing. Stayed I, up all night. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm always up. You know what's funny? You know how it works. I'm up all night basically as is. We're global. So uh, most of my development team is obviously not in Toronto. So we have, you know, like uh, Europe, Africa, South Asia, so Singapore, Singapore, uh, um, Shanghai, and all of the team works in the background in Discord. So at any given time, it's kind of important to be a part of the team. So I know what's happening. We work in Sprint. So uh, people finish what they're doing. And the next team moves on to what the next team has to do. So yeah, I'm up kind of all night as is. But like you, like the market has been up and down. And we all know that it has to kind of fluctuate like that so we can get in. And when you get these moments where there's a dip, you want to get at it if you're doing personal investment. So I did the same thing as you. I scoped those first hundred assets and I figured out which ones I needed to make larger bags of. And I think you made a good decision. Crowd loans are starting up in a couple of days. So why not load up some dots so that you can have some more access to, to the, to the crowdfunding. For sure. It's going to be a busy, busy time for Polkadot once those things Same kick thing. in. I don't, I, 
Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, crowd loans are going to be awesome. No, 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 I was just saying, like, it's funny that we all kind of did the same thing, bought more DOT yesterday. Like, I never use centralized exchanges unless it's to buy Polkadot. And uh, I, like, I loaded up yesterday. You guys, so, can somebody, I'm ready for can one loans. of you guys explain a parachain for those who doesn't understand it clearly? In a simplified manner. Because the parachain update is coming 11 in November. In that oh, would be yeah. probably better for uh, Tim or Jim to explain. For me, I'm like a, I'm more just like I'm the guy who finds these things, and I might not be able to tell it exactly how it works. I can do like a small bit. Sure. Tim might be able to like elaborate on it, but they're basically custom. So parachains are custom, like project specific blockchains. Uh, they're integrated into the Polkadot system, and they work with Kusama Network. Uh, they basically allow for like a number of use cases. They can feed the main blockchain. Uh, we call that the relay chain and they're considered to be like the heart of Polkadot and Kusama. And they give you access to many other commodities and assets and projects coming up off the launch pad system. Uh, so uh, yeah, like crowdfunding uh, that's happening or the crowd loan process is basically the ability to be an investor. You get to stake your dot and in return for staking your dot for a longer epoch or session, uh, you're, you're uh, funding other projects that go through an approval process. And that approval process gives them a grant to be able to develop and build underneath of these networks. And as an investor, we benefit by being paid in those new projects tokens. So like personally for me, this will be my second, I guess, uh, round at it as a funder and an investor doing it. And I have only experienced really great outcomes, not only for my DOT that obviously appreciated well in stake, uh, as well as like the tokens that I've received and the projects that have gone up on funding. So I'm excited for what's about to happen. I can't wait to see what I get to invest in. Yeah, I think uh, you hit it on the head um, of just like, I, I guess the best way to for me to summarize parachains is the simplest explanation I have, which is it's a it's a way to get your transactions into the bigger system. So in order to get like like you kind of mentioned earlier about the vetting process, um, you have to be you have to purchase a parachain. That's what these parachain auctions are on the 11th. Um, and then you mentioned the crowd loaning aspect of it. But the reason a project would want a parachain is so that they could be a part of the bigger ecosystem. So Polkadot, um, their, their, their one liner is the chain of chains, right? So they, they are able, they're going to be able to link all the chains depending on uh, which projects have parachains. So it's, it's a way to get information into the Polkadot ecosystem, that information being transactions or votes or, or uh, what's built on what's called pallets. So Palette is uh, built off of what's called Rust, um, uh, which is a programming language. Uh, it's different from Solidity. Um, and so there's a lot of projects out there. My favorite one is Moonbeam, which um, they'll be doing smart contract integrations onto their parachain. So they have to get a parachain in order to build out a smart contract bridge um, in order to get the information from the smart contracts using Moonbeam on, into the Polkadot ecosystem. So that's just one use case, one very strong use case of a parachain, but um, it can handle a lot of different data and put it into a kind of a universal pool of uh, transactions and blocks. I hope yes. I gave an okay yeah. explanation. <laughs> yeah, like I was with Nate yesterday from Moonbeam. Um, they're doing big things and always seem to be like super helpful. Their business development team is uh, looking all the time, I think, to engage with like real development. So yeah, huge things kind of going on. Uh, they've been working on it. If you don't know who Gavin Wood is or like how he's contributed to Web3 development, I highly, highly, highly recommend you check him out. Yeah, that's the. Can anybody yeah, tell where you can stake poker lot uh, with a high APY? I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd say crowd loans are your best bet. For yeah. That, yeah. Like, where is it yeah. again? Could you repeat it? So, um, you could actually look at all crowd loans uh, from what's called Dot Market Cap. If you look it up on Twitter, there will be a link to their website. Uh, they have a auctions tab. And you'll be able to see like what's coming up in the future and and previous kusama auctions i think were ran through dot market cap so it's kind of a, it's a um concentrated area for dot information uh, that's where i get my my news and and my updates 
I gotta check that one out. I actually I haven't looked at that one yet. Um, but what would you what would you guys what as a developers or you know guys who know the back end and front end, what do you think is the biggest difference between something like uh or what is the purpose of them having, let's say, a uh, Moon River and Moonbeam and a polka dot and a Kusama? Like what do you think of the advantage of that is? Is it to take off some of the transaction uh uh um uh I guess cluster like how cluster networks get is it they like take over for that or what, what's the focus for that? I like my understanding they all do something very very different. So Moon River is much more like DGen investor base. Uh, like Moon Beam is much more of an institutional base. So mm. like that's why I work with them. Um, I'm looking obviously to replace like major banking components with my project with Vault DeFi. Uh, we do interchangeable commodities and mixed commodity uh, versatile vehicle, basically. Um, so ideally speaking, that's why I'm with them. But I know like um, Moon River is much more degen. Um, you have Akala, which is their leading DeFi hub. Um, and then Kusama, just being like what Kusama is, which is this amazing kind of foreground for their entire, their entire ecosystem. Very nice explanation. Yeah, and because some is a little more fun, right? Yeah. Like, I, from my understanding, yeah, exactly. it's, it's a little more DJ. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I actually almost got the Raven tattoo in March. <laughs> I wanted to be part of the Kusama Society, but I chickened out. <laughs> a whole bunch of people here were just talking. Me and my online developers, and then, well, I guess there, we still have this on the table as a potential thing because we want to do nodes, and the, the tattoo is kind of part of it. But, yeah, interesting. And then uh, as the room fills up, if you guys want to just come up one by one and talk about your project or tell, give it like a quick little, you know, maybe 30 seconds to one minute summary of what your project is and what it's about just for the people out there listening. Um, we encourage anybody that's in the audience to come up as well. If you uh, have any questions about crypto, we have some amazing brains to pick in the house. Uh, if you have any concerns about crypto or, or anything like that, as long as it's nothing to do with taxes or anything, I think we're open to discuss it. Um, but uh, feel feel more more than uh, comfortable to raise your hand, and uh, we'll bring you up, and you can talk to Will. I'm just filling out the form, you guys, for the giveaway as well. So I will be posting that here shortly, and make sure that's one of the banners at the top as well. Dude, I got my I got my guy in here. He just came into the room, uh, Mortal E. Uh, he we jump on a podcast together about two to three day, days out of the week. Super cool dude. Uh, he always has a lot of a lot of uh, good perspectives on the market, and um, he's pretty good at finding some gems as well. What are you doing, Pete? What's up, brother? How you doing? Yeah, good man. How you doing? Amazing, man. Just you know, enjoying another day in in, in crypto dice. <laughs> hey, that's, that's the one, man. That's the one. Oh, what a day. You, you, you moved your three meters already to get to your work desk? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. We, we have a joke. We have a joke in our podcast that uh, crypto is the only job you can have where you, you can get up and go three three meters and, and actually be at your job, right? <laughs> <laughs> get, get out of bed. I don't even need to walk and I'm already at my workstation. It's a, uh, it's a lovely life. And then you I say see, it's uh, like a good thing. It is an amazing thing. <laughs> it is. So what's the uh, what's the current talks and what we on to? For sure, uh, definitely beats going to an office and working forty hours a week. <laughs> and then I see we also got uh, I see some people in here for Mooning Corn as well as Flavors. Uh, if you guys want to come up, I like what Flavors is doing. They have a, a token that's not child that it, it um I think it rewards in multiple tokens. Um, so I, I like the multiple reward tokens. Because it shows like uh, it shows community unity, right? Where these projects came together and was like, "Hey, let's uh, let's work towards a common goal, and, and we're gonna reward e we're gonna award reward each of other token holders with a little bit of each other token." Um, so just to have that uh, the unity between the project, it, it, you guys don't know it, it, it works wonders for everybody. Hey Scott, watch your mic. Sorry. But yeah, if you guys uh, want to come up and talk a little bit about more about your projects, you're more than welcome to as well. I just wanted to say that form is up, you guys, too, as well. So uh, just feel free to go fill that out for a chance. We're going to give away some tokens today. So 
definitely make sure to fill out that form is to be one of the five that's picked today for the free tokens for yourself. And then also another thing that we do uh, for all the projects that's in the house or in the building today, uh, if you guys, um, if you guys want to talk with me and Scott after this, we try to get with at least a project or two uh, to do a giveaway every time we do the Twitter space. We do these two times a week, so uh, we'll match contributions with your project. Uh, so if you guys put up project tokens, uh, we'll put up tokens as well. We'll do a giveaway for the people in the audience. I'm even fine if one project <laughs> wants to give away their their tokens today for the giveaway. We could do that as well. We can we can uh, s switch the tokens to whatever project wants to be the top today. I'll, I'll send you some tokens just for fun. Yeah, I'll send you some tokens too. I didn't know you did that, Scott. Yeah, you guys, anytime. You just ask. I got tokens. I got lots of tokens. I have a multi. I have one of the only multi. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Are you still there, Jen? I think I think Jen's caught in the blender right now. <laughs> what? Well, if you're walking down by, but what we can do, you guys, like you, uh, Jen, and uh, Polka Polka Party, we can pick five people are going to be winning today. So what I might do is split them up, and if you guys want to send them. The winning tokens you can do that as well and we'll just pick randomly who, who is the one that wins yeah yeah just whoever wins for me just send me a dm and a bsc network address and i will send you some tokens same yeah, here yeah, definitely Easy. for sure we can do that sign me up too so make it six winners that way that nice one, two, hey three. man this is gonna start being the go. giveaway. this is gonna be the giveaway space man you know nice and that's what it's all about, you know. Like for us uh, at Big One, as well as the uh, Asia Blockcast community, we try to we try to really talk about unity. You know, like we have a lot of projects come in, and we have a lot of people that come in and talk about their project, and they may feel like their project's better than the next project. Um, they may feel like, uh, you know, that th their project is the only project. But what we have to realize is that this is this is cryptocurrency versus fiat, right? So we have to bridge these gaps uh, amongst the communities, just like the developers are bridging gaps amongst the blockchains. So we got to do our part and make sure we're educating the new people to come in. And it's not a competition. Uh, it's fun competition, if anything. But at the end of the day, man, I want to see us all make it. I, I think eventually, man, uh, if it's not already, I think crypto is going to take over fiat. Like, really, really quick. I think within the next couple of years, we're going to start seeing, um, obviously, like crypto payments used in stores a lot more than fiat. I personally use very little fiat anymore. I keep it because you have to, um, and obviously, like my bank account, so that I can have like a credit system here in Canada. You need that if you want to, if you want to survive. But otherwise, like my day to day use, my average purchases, I I use crypto. I've switched to crypto now too. Using that crypto visa is the best thing yeah. ever. Yeah, yeah, uh, we were talking about that a while ago. I'm glad you got it. Good for you, because it does, it makes a huge difference. And if you're invested, like just as an example, you know, I bought she, you know, because I knew who Ryoshi was, the developer when that was coming out. And, you know, it's booming right now. So for me, I can scalp profit right now daily, put it onto my card. And there you go. Like I'm paying for life with, you know, she profit. Hey, Jim, would you mind going over the pro card for the people in the audience that may not know Oh my know gosh, about I wish I knew a ton about it. I don't, obviously, I'm just a, a, like a simple investor in it. But ideally, you just go online, you you know do what crow.com asks you to do, which is obviously KYC, which is different in every country. And then it's really simple. You just stake a very small amount of crow, and you can do it without staking it, but I would advise you to do the lowest amount, which is like $400, I think. Um, and ideally, you then get the card sent to you and you can just move profit and or fiat onto the card, but you benefit with tons of different rewards. So you get like free Netflix, I think you get free Spotify, you get 8% back, I think, I, at least I do 8% back on all of my purchases. Uh, so instead of like regular credit where you're just like um, worried about like having to pay down that credit part, this one actually is rewarding you for using the card. I have friends actually that have also figured out that if you go to the gas station, you know, when you use it at the uh, at the pump, it has to pre-authorize, like so you put a hundred bucks to pre-authorize the fill. You get the full amount of rewards on the pre-authorization too. Oh, wow. Hey, so do you, like, let's say that you, you like you were saying you have SHIB, right? And um, yeah. you want to move profits from SHIB to your card. 
you would you do that on do the do they have their own exchange or is this a yep. process where you have to convert back to DMV and then send nope. over? It's all on their own exchange. They're actually in the process of building out uh, a massive DeFi uh, blockchain as well. That's under. Uh, let me think of the name real quick. Well, maybe not. I will continue. To just call it. <laughs> Love the honesty. <laughs> no, I, um, let me think for a second. Um, yeah, no, because it's brand new. Uh, but yeah, they have um, their major. Ex they obviously are a major exchange. They're in the United States. Uh, they've uniquely positioned themselves to market specifically to the sports and professional sports industry. So now, if you're into like UFC or boxing or Formula One uh, race cars, uh, they are like the number one sponsor. I think they're probably moving into baseball from what I understood as well. So they, they're they looking to be like a big index for people to use. Uh, they carry all the major coins. They list cheap, which was, you know, a big deal for them when that happened. And yeah, you just simply move the money over. Uh, my, cust my clients like and investors that are with me at Vault DeFi, uh, are, one of our tokens is a hyper deflationary, but a compounding stable coin. So we reflect in BUSD. People sell their BUSD over to uh, crypto.com and then move it directly onto their credit card. So they're using like their dividend payments that they get every day on crypto.com and then just live life with dividends, which we all know is ideally the way you want to do investing. I love the I love the fact that you guys kind of created your own stable coin as well that you could uh, trade against. That's that's super dope. Yeah, yeah, and we have um. Like we have X token uh, technology, it's in beta right now, but my three tokens can trade against each other. They have pools uh, listed on Pancake and you can trade for triangular uh, arbitrage, which is super unique. No other project has anything like that. So you can gain your market share within our own community uh, on a daily basis all day long. Very nice, very nice. Um, I did see uh, Mooney come up, uh, somebody from Mooney. If you guys want to talk, only thing you have to do is just uh, mute yourself and and have the floor. Yeah, how you doing, everybody? Uh, I have some minutes in between. I have something to get to, but did want to come up and uh, talk a little bit. Um, my name's Ricardo. I'm with uh, the Exponi team. In a, in a quick gist of what exactly we do, uh, we're an operation that's in collaboration with a decentralized mining network to help sustain and grow uh, the value of the Axmoney token. So essentially, we have a group of miners that sign on to join our, uh, our currently our Ethereum uh, mining pool, which, you know, when we when we reach uh, a threshold, we, we use the Ethereum to buy to buy up Axmoney tokens which is what's paid out to the miners. And the miners not only get the value that they've mined in Ethereum, but as well as a 7.77% on top of that for just being on the network with us. Uh, we did start off as a ERC-20, which you know we, we, we are uh, blockchain agnostic. So we've moved over to the Binance Smart Chain recently so now we're a BEP20 token um one of the things that i can say in the sense of for tokenomics that we have is a uh, 10 percent uh buy and sell which seven percent of that is reflected to the to the holders while three percent goes to the tax wallet and the tax wallet is actually used to purchase more mining equipment for the community so uh, I would say it was maybe about 12 days ago or yeah, about 12 days ago, we had sold off from the tax wallet in order to purchase a Bitcoin miner that should be coming online either today or tomorrow uh, with Compass Mining. And that's actually a community owned Bitcoin miner to, to help feed uh, back into the project uh, is a, you know, max supply of 21 billion tokens. Uh, not all the tokens are circulating. That's one of the uh, mechanics we wanted to ensure that we threw into the project to not have, you know, the whole supply out there where, you know, people could just come in and scoop up majority of it and, you know, have kind of like a, uh, 
an imposing threat on the project, I should say. So in essence, we do release tokens on a weekly basis. Uh, right now, I would say it's a little bit less than 20% is currently circulating. About 80% is uh, still lo locked away uh, for future release. Um, the so thing guys, too is just so you yeah, guys do uh you guys do uh group uh, or you do community mining uh on the Ethereum side you said yeah but we 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 do it currently on the Ethereum side but we are building out our APIs in order to integrate other blockchains that are proof of work that we would mine on uh and then as well just you know with the tax wallet sales that we do in order to buy Bitcoin miners that's, you know, hosted uh, by Compass Mining. So it's, you know, we don't have to worry about having that on, on our end, but it's, you know, being facilitated. Nice. I, do I, I understand that you guys are working with flavors a bit too as well, or is that correct? Well, yeah, when, when the flavors project came about, uh, I believe we were one of the first, I think they have three, uh, three current projects that they're working with where essentially people who hold the flavors token would get uh, X money tokens uh, reflected into their wallets, you know, in the form of as, the, as they have it as drips. So yeah, we, we, we've partnered with them. That's nice, man. Always good to see the projects working together. Like I said, I always think that's a big thing as far as uh, community unity uh, within the development side as well as, as, as far down as the, the just community to community uh, for the project. So definitely good to see that. Yeah, I think one of, one, of the, one of the bigger things that we do really try to focus on is that aspect of, you know, building community and, you know, not, not being, you know, maxis in any one coin token or blockchain, but more of a crypto maxis and, you know, having love for the entire space and, you know, as I said before, we're we're blockchain agnostic. So the fact that we started on Ethereum, switched over to the Binance Smart Chain, and then we have the ability, well, we're building out the ability to to mine on you know different networks. It's that's that's what the whole point is we're we're supplying security uh, for proof of work networks by uh, pointing our you know hashing power towards towards those blockchains. So. That's that's really the ultimate goal here. And then obviously providing that service allows us to get the the mining rewards, uh, which will you know feed into the to the liquidity of uh, X money. Nice. Uh, again, for new people that just came in, uh, for some people, I see some new faces popping in. Uh, again, this space we just open up uh, twice a week. Uh, we just bring in, we we invite multiple projects to come in. We talk about anything that's related to crypto. Um, if you guys are in the audience and you want to ask questions to any of the projects that's up here to come up, or you have questions about, or if you just want to talk something good about the project that you're in, um, you're more than welcome to raise your hand. We'll bring you up as well as a speaker. We want everybody to feel comfortable here. Um, you don't have to be a, a developer to talk. You don't. You, you can just be happy for the day <laughs> and just want to talk into this space, and that's fine. Uh, and then make sure you guys follow your speakers. Um, a lot of the speakers that come up, uh, all they all uh, they all offer something different. Uh, the more we host this space, uh, I see it each and every time. You know, I, I'll I'll see some new faces pop in. I'll see some of the older faces, and just the cohesiveness between you know the the, the no older faces and the newer faces, it, it always meshes well, right? So it's just it's really good to see the space grow. And I just wanna I wanna invite anybody who wants to come up and talk to feel feel free to do so. And I got my guy Captain Booty here. <laughs> Uh, from Flavors Project, man. He's one of those guys I get excited when he talks just because he talks with so much excitement. So uh, always it's good Captain to have somebody here. Yeah, I think I just uh, seen him pop up. Hey, Captain. Good, good morning. What's there up? There he is. What's Listen, up? I, 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 got some sleep. I got some sleep for the first time <laughs> in three months, and I'm up early. Let's and, go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let um, me hear you one time. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Hey, yo, shout out to shout out to X Mooney. Uh, shout out to Diablo. We just held uh, a, a space where uh, you know we really kind of educated on these projects that have uh, 
external liquidity. One of the challenges uh, that I'm uh, finding out is that, uh, you know, it's there's a large education aspect that uh, has to happen uh, for projects who are providing uh, external liquidity. First of all, people don't know what external liquidity is, and so I'll get to that right away. External liquidity is when the project adds liquidity from or, or money from outside of its holders. So uh, whether they take money from other kind of operations and they bring that back into the project. And what that does is create a solid uh, project floor. Um, and, but it's not like a quick, it's not like a quick process. The other thing that uh, we were, that we really wanted to educate on was uh, liquidity pools, because that's another thing we found out uh, that uh, the public really doesn't know how liquidity pools work. And uh, being that we're backed so heavily, you don't get the price action uh, that you do from a lot of other uh, uh, tokens. So people, uh, it makes people nervous and I get it. So I think that, you know, the best way that I try to explain it to people is, hey, we're not going to shoot up super fast. Uh, and, you know, but on the other side, we're going to, if, if we go down, it's going to be very slow. And the benefit for you is that on the down end, you'll be able to recoup uh, more of your money because of the highly backed uh, liquidity. And uh, in, in a lot of projects, and, you know, it's just based on, the uh, you know, how the project is, right? There's a lot of different tools uh, to make money. Um, if uh, you're, you're not backed, you're going to shoot down fast, you're going to go up high, and uh, it's a lot of volatility. Flavors isn't really... Uh, a volatility. I did not mean to do that. I, I do that apologize. all the time. I do that all the time. <laughs> but <laughs> flavors isn't a uh, 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 isn't a real like high volatility token. So what uh, what eventually happen is we uh, inject uh, more uh, dollars from our marketing operations into uh, the liquidity pool. It'll build a solid. It'll build a solid foundation where we're not as reliant on. Uh, investors going in and out of the token and then we'll get to the point where it's uh all growth it's nice seeing you again Wait, so i just want to say that real quick too it's been a long time buddy absolutely I, ju I just i just had a quick question um so you said like external liquidity but you're saying you're moving your market seeing fund into your uh internal liquidity so liquidity you own do I have that right? Yeah, so what we're doing is, uh, and we have a unique system for doing this called uh, minting and pairing. So we started with a, a low supply. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take the money that uh, we make from our marketing partnerships and marketing deals. 20% uh, of that uh, will be paired uh, with uh, our token and BNB. And we'll, uh, we can mint uh, new tokens. Or we can take uh, that uh, those funds and buy back existing supply. We can hold on to it. We can burn, or we can burn it. It's interesting. We do a similar thing. Uh, constantly do buy back and burn, and uh, as developers, and and that's on both sides. So I'm adding liquidity on a daily basis to our X traders as well. So it's interesting to see that other guys are doing the same thing in a way. Yeah, and all yeah, our, just, all our funds that that go to uh, you know uh, buy back and burn, they don't come from uh, investors. They all come from our uh, marketing uh, partnerships. Cool. I yeah, I guess that's um, I, we have all internal liquidity, but that's built off. We have the first uh, auto liquidity token on ERC twenty. So Poker Party has the auto liquidity on ERC twenty which you, is pretty easy to do for a BSC token. And that is also a way you can make sure your token never dies because, you know, I think we take like 3% of transactions uh, go towards our liquidity pool. And um, so it, the liquidity pool can never die technically. So yeah, there's a lot of interesting things out there about liquidity. Yeah. And like smart development, I think it's starting to change, right? Like, Basically, we don't want to say it, but we do want to say it. Like, we're not these pump and dump tokens. We're not these pump and dump projects. Uh, you're never going to see us, like, heavy way developer wallets to the favor of being, you know, just a developer. Really, like, we're building for long-term 
like longevity for our investors. So ideally utilizing like different tools, utilizing liquidity and math the right way to benefit people is, is what we're doing. So it's nice to hear like other guys are doing the same thing. I'm really, I'm impressed. Yeah, I will have hey, to- Mr. Kruger, I see you had your hand up. Oh yeah, I was about to say, I see you yeah. had your hand up. You could go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I was gonna say, it's good to see that other projects are doing that, buying back into the token, uh, you know, and that's something that we wanted to do from the very beginning. Now that we have our NFT platform, you know, we will have revenue coming in. Uh, we will have tokens coming in. And we decided to do the same thing, you know, on a quarterly basis, we're going to be buying tokens from our profits, uh, but we're going to do it directly buying in to the pancake swap. So people get reflections and then those tokens will get burnt. So it's going to, you know, increase the liquidity pool, give free, uh, you know, give re extra reflections to everybody that's holding. And, you know, those tokens get taken out of circulation. So it's good to see that projects are, you know, doing that as well. Uh, and not just, you know, randomly burning them, but actually buying back and burning them because that helps all the holders as, as, as a whole. So I, I love it. Yeah, man, I, I like to see I like to see everybody's uh, different way of doing that. Right. And uh, just uh, I always try to give a, a, a token holders uh, perspective on it. So for the listeners out there, if you're listening and they might get a little too technical for you, uh, basically, you don't as a as a project, right? You don't want all your your uh, all your funds going straight into the liquidity pool because what happens is it makes it easier for you to manipulate. Uh, if you guys don't know, you're obviously going to have way more tokens. Projects are going to have way more tokens uh, than the value of the project can sustain. Um, so you have to these buybacks actually help, right? Because in the, in the term whether where it might be some kind of a dump or a well wants to try to manipulate. Then you can you can go like you know the contract can can uh, add money back into it periodically, uh, so that you don't have these big spikes in the chart. So that's just like a little bit of the side from a, a token holder side, uh, without trying to get too technical about it. And I I I do appreciate you know the the opportunity to come up and uh, speak. Actually, I do have to get to a meeting real quick. So. Uh, you know, we if you have you any up. questions, yeah, yeah. If you have any questions, you know, you know, our our team members are you know available most of the time. You know, especially in the Discord, we have a lot of uh, community members that are active, especially our miners. If anybody's interested in joining the mining network with us, you know, we we're we're always open to to educate and answer questions because one of the things that we truly want to do is you know build up this community and you know, really help each other out into knowing how to be more efficient and more effective crypto miners in general. So even if you're coming in, you know, to join our network and, you know, get your feet wet and really understand these concepts and, and how to set up, you know, your, your GPU or even to build a mining rig, you know, you, you gain that experience and that education. And if you want to go off and do your own thing, Hey, you know, you're, you're always more than welcome to do that. It's just, it's good that we have like this, uh, this community opportunity to really build each other up. So I appreciate the time. Hey, X Mooney, before you drop off, can I get you to uh, just talk real quick about uh, the flavors effect and uh, the effect that it had on uh, X Mooney this week? Oh yeah, for sure. So uh, when, when the flavors effect happened, which was literally right at the launch of uh, flavors, we saw pretty much uh for one, a, a, a huge increase in our holders. Uh, I believe, I, I almost want to say, we hit, we hit a thousand holders five days ago, and then when the flavors launch happened, which was two days ago, we went up to seventeen hundred, and I had taken a screenshot to make a post to show that we hit seventeen hundred, but then from that post. Within three hours, we went up to, I believe it was like 2,200. So it was like an exponential increase in holders. The The value of the of the token did shoot up as well. Uh, we're currently having uh, a correction with people obviously taking profits, but we're still actually going now back upward. So that's nice to see. But in, in an overall aspect of what the, what the effect was, was people one getting some x money that they didn't have and two being able to take a look at the project and and really give them the opportunity to to see what we're doing 
and for them to continue to hold is, you know, just showing that they did their research and understand how we're operating in this space. And, you know, they're bored, they're, they're bored this, uh, this Martian rocket. That's nice, man. Uh, Thanks, man. I appreciate that. That, that, like I said, I man, it just goes to show, like, uh, for the for the projects that do come together to do this, uh, and flavors being able to offer uh, rewards and Mooney, uh, what that does is it gives Mooney more more uh, holders, right? But then it goes for people who's doing their due diligence when they go in and they search wallets on BSC Scan or, or whatever they use to search how many holders are in, on that contract. It, it looks better, you know, because the more holders you see on the project, the more comfortable you should be to want to hold that project as well. Uh, I'm not trying to be one of 100 holders. That's not my goal at all when I go in to look at a project. Um, if you are one of the 100, you might be the last of the 100. Um, and you might end up holding all the tokens that are valued at zero. So uh, just always look at that. And uh, I've definitely, I did a little bit of research on the um, flavors when it came out. You know, uh, I like I like flavors, man. I, I've known them for a while. So I went ahead and just picked it up uh, just more so on the, off, off the, off the love. Um, and I'm just going to hold on to it. Uh, but I definitely I like what you guys are doing and, and, and partnering it up with other with other projects as well, man. So it's, it's, a, it's a step in the right direction. It's all about the community, you guys. Like we all have to stick together, work together, and uh, stop the separation. That's how I feel. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Y'all enjoy. Y'all enjoy the rest of the day. If uh, if I could come into another space that you guys hold and speak, you know, like I'm. Um, uh, I'll definitely try to swing through or even s have some of our uh, team members swing through so that way they could talk it up as well and just talk shop in general. I appreciate the time, y'all. Yeah, no problem, bro. Sure. Enjoy your day. So what's up, Flavors? You got anything else you want to add today, man? You guys are Yeah, just man. There's, there's an uh, AMA. AMA. A there's an AMA at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, 3 p.m. Yeah. Eastern with uh x surge yes um, there'll hey, be some announcements i'm coming you're going let's go yes I, i'll, I'll be, there be there i'm gonna be I, there too i'm excited I about it mark will be there let's talk x usd what x usd <laughs> let's go so flavors <laughs> may or may not be uh partnering with xusd you gotta wait to uh 3 p.m uh to find out and uh there may or may not be uh one of the things with flavors we wanted to ask uh to be able to give our holders was uh access to uh pre-sales and uh the such so uh you know there may or may not be uh some really cool announcements with flavor holders today and uh, definitely um, rewarding. I know it's been a short time, but definitely uh, there will be rewards for uh, people that hold. So um, it's, it's a really great uh, partnership if it's announced today at 3 p.m. I'm not telling you, you got to be there. Uh, so go ahead and follow X Search. Am I allowed to tell people a little bit about what like X Tokens is? Can I give you like a little tidbit so you want to come? Yes. So yeah. Surge, right? Surge, super unique ecosystem. They're currently building out their own decks. So uh, super decentralized. Uh, right now, it will be like hundreds of different liquidity pools. People with their own projects will be able to manage your own liquidity pool through here. But specifically, if any token that XUSD is paired with goes up or down, it will literally move at 5% because of the trading volume or 0.5% because of trading volume. So uh, it's going to allow for trading that will cause price corrections, which is called arbitrage. Uh, we kind of specialize in that at Vault DeFi. But uh, we work directly with Surge as well. And I would just say that uh, additionally, you'll get a 0.75% buy fee and a 0.25 sell fee. And because of that, you can never lose by buying an XUSD token. It's always going to go up. But we'll talk about that at 3 o'clock. And where is that going to be at at 3 o'clock, guys? It's going to be in spaces. All right. Whose space is it in? Uh, I think it's going to be, is it an X Surge space? Yeah, it's going to be an X Surge space. space. Um, yeah. If you want, I could post there, something from their account. Yeah, the go, ahead. go ahead and add it. Yeah, definitely. I'll go ahead. It's so worth it. Stable coin. It's uh, appreciating. Um, you know, what else can I say? You can protect yourself in like a bear market. 
you have extra funds when you want to, you know, YOLO in like me and Vibin were talking about this morning where you just need to have capital because you have that dip that you want to buy. Well, ideally, when you have a dip you want to buy, you want to buy that with a stable coin because you're, you know, ready to go. It's like you're, you know, just waiting. Yeah, you don't have, you don't have to wait for B and B. You have to sell transfer. what you love. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't Yo, want to sell morning, what I love. I hoard this, my tokens. I just want to say morning, this is amazing. No problem. This whole uh, thing. I want like every all the love is is what crypto should be sorry to butt in but i just oh, wanted right. to say to you guys i've just been sitting in the back kind of like throwing my fist in the air like hell yes finally yeah. it is what it's supposed yeah, to be like, people, like, get for, like get lost we're friends like all of these projects here you got mr crypto you know you have myself you have big one you have vibe and you have what we got flavors in here i'm not rolling down but Trebla is in here. Like all of us have these unique projects. Most of us do collaborations, like collaborations. Tim's in here from Poker Party. Like um, it's unique, but the truth is we are all in the same space. We all have way more in common than we will ever have different. Uh, we're here, we're adopting it. We are, you know, setting the precedent and trying to like raise the bar. And the truth is like, we do it together. That's how it happens. Man, Until you're proven to be too. something that shouldn't be here, you are a part of the family. Like, Crypto's here. I'm just about to say it's one word, crypto. Right. Get under the umbrella yeah. and let us party while we're there. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> Let's have some fun and get to know each other and, you know, support well, each other. What I was going to say when we started this space, like me and Vibin and Jordan, who's not here anymore, but he might drop in too, you never know. We've always suggested that the best thing that could happen to cryptocurrency is to work together. And we've kept that positivity in our Twitter spaces, in our Telegrams, in everything. And I think it's the only way to go, you guys, moving forward is to work together and help educate others. And I hope to continue to see that growing. I mean, I wish I was in here with my own handle, CryptoBeast32, but, you know, I'm happy to see all these people that know me as well. So it's always good to see everyone in here. And, and it comes full circle because it's so funny. Like, I, I you guys know, I told you, I only used to invest in Bitcoin, right? And then um, when I did get into altcoins and stuff like that, I got on Twitter space, uh, Twitter, and I got on Twitter spaces. And I used to go sit in Mr. Crypto spaces when he used to talk about safe moon for fucking hours. And they were putting up billboards and shit. And I was like, who is this guy? And then, you know, uh, Jerry or uh, Mr. Booty, uh, he used to have spaces that made me feel comfortable to talk in, you know. Like, And then before that, I never spoke in spaces, right? Like, and, and Andy's always on my ass, like, hey, you know, you need to be more involved in community. You need to be out here talking or you got a great personality. Like, what are you like? Why are you not? And I'm just like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I'm not a developer. And it's like, you don't have to be a developer to even want to come in. But since I, I, I was able to come in, you guys don't know, but I do. Uh, I have a promotion company, uh, Nightlife, and it's called Vibe and Entertainment. Uh, it's one of the other things that I do outside of the electrical consultant company I own. But um, and my thing was always like we have promoters in our city who don't want to work together because they feel like it's competition. And I brought all of that together where people felt to like have the best of the best parties. We should all do them together, right? So now our parties are better and everybody's together. And I was able, I feel like here in this space and, and to hear uh, Alpha, I don't see your uh, Alpha Mark come up uh, and say that, man. It just made me feel really good, man. So I appreciate everybody's good vibes and coming in and, and showing love. Bob, you know, I haven't never met you, but I would party with you any day. Just your okay. energy is it's like, fucking... like, can I get a little bit of that in the morning time? A little cup of vitamin, <laughs> little vitamin energy drink going no, yeah, on that's, in here. That's what people, that's what people say, man. You know, like, it's, it's that let's go energy, man. Let's go. <laughs> I'll have to thank Andy for pushing you because it's true. This is your calling. You're great at it. Yeah, man. When I first came onto the team, I just wanted to get get involved with, uh, you know, with crypto. And he was like, you know, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I'm not really sure, man. And he was like, you have great personality. Like, I could not bring you on as an employee. He's like, I mean, you, you you know too much about business. He's like, I'd rather see you as a partner. Like, and then I was like, what? And that kind of gave me confidence coming from Andy and then, you know, being able to go from Derek to here and then being able to co-host spaces with Scott and then see, being able to have you guys all come back in and we all still get to talk. And it's just a uh, it's a different level now, but it's, it's still friendly, right? And I, I, I love it, man. So I appreciate uh, each one of you guys taking steps in the right direction to build your projects out and then be able to come back and tell us about it. I will say that I'm probably going to steal the license plate from Mr. Crypto and it's going to say, let's go. <laughs> Let, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. <laughs> it's almost like, uh, what's up from Budweiser? What's up? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, 
Hey guys, I, I got to run to a meeting real quick, but I just want to say thanks. And this is the best space on Twitter. I appreciate so, it. It is right um, and also That's nice how I and... feel about it. I put like this time aside uh, from like my whole day. This is the only one other than the one this afternoon that I, I'm always trying to be at. Scott knows that. Yeah. Yep. This is the one. Just always appreciate great vibes, like in, people mentioned earlier. Actually, always. booties yeah, no, too. Let me just give a quick me. shout out. Booty did one last night. They covered everything, and it was it was pretty good. Like it, it had solid content. If you were new to crypto, great. If you're a veteran and just want to hear the weather report, which he does, which is just market <laughs> information, awesome. But yeah, sorry, Tim. I don't want to keep you from your meeting. Have a great day. Oh, it's all good, guys. Yeah, have a good one. See ya, Hi, bro. Peace. Anybody else I want to come up? Like I said, man, you don't have to be a developer to come up, but if you just got something you want to say or um, you feel Hello the vibe, man, just come up. Hey, how's it going? Hello, everyone. My question is to the experienced member here. Like, I'm a new investor in cryptocurrency, like 10 months old. So I want to ask that there are thousands of cryptocurrencies out there. How do we know which one is legit and worth of investment? Like, we all know there are these 10 to 15 hot cryptocurrencies. Apart from that, there are thousands of more coins. How do you decide like which one is legit and that's a really good coin to invest? We know some basic 15 hot coins like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Polkadot, Doge, and you know Solano. That's my question. I would say, and this is just my personal, you know, way I build my portfolios or advise my clients to build them it into all different asset classes. So you want like DGEN, DeFi, um, SaaS, cloud management, storage, NFTs, uh, and that's just touching the surface of the many different um, classes that you can buy for digital assets or commodities. Um, you also want to maybe mix up a little bit of blockchains, which is mainly what you were just discussing, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, M uh, Matic, Harmony, and the list goes on. There's private and public blockchains, but specifically all those blockchains have commodities associated with them that have different classifications. Uh, so when you're building it out, it's no different than building like a previous type of an asset portfolio that might have had stocks. You might have metals, you might have, you know, soft wood or lumber. Uh, you might have stuff that's predominantly in, you know, major pop culture. So we're doing the same thing now in digital assets. So when you're looking at different things in different projects, um, I would recommend always looking at the white paper. Uh, and then I would also tell my clients as well, like, are you looking for short-term gains? Are you looking for daily scalps? Are you looking for direct ROI or dividends payments? Mm -hmm. All of that matters. So if you're just looking to like stock load into like the uh, internet of value, you're trying to go with something that's like all Ethereum based or Web3 specific, Cardano, um, Polkadot, you know, Ethereum, for example, Web3 yeah. based. Polygon. Exactly. Or are you trying to go like heavy into store of value and then go Bitcoin and so, like solid Bitcoin and move to stable? So when market's doing something funny, you sell down your Bitcoin, wait, then go mm -hmm. back at it. It just depends on your strategy. It, you know, there's many people that are just long term hodler, like you're just going to buy and never look at it again for a couple of years. It just it truly is really a personal kind of investment strategy. But out of like the 10,000 coins that are there, it'll take years for anybody to get through them all. They're all, you know, unique to them, to their own liking. Uh, you might want ones that are all related to charity. You might want ones that are, you know, specifically re related to like industry or institutions, uh, lenders. You know, there's just so many ways to look at crypto or digital assets. Now we're calling them synthetic assets. They're going to move into liquidified metals and gold market. So many cool things to look at. I'm buying. But yeah, Sign you're in the right up. place. I'll buy whatever you're selling. Right? Let's go. Let's go, right? Man. That was, that, was a, that was really informative. Thank you so much. And it's just one more comment I want to make on that how Shiba Inu is taking over Doge's place. But yeah. isn't yeah. crazy that how Elon Musk comment on Doge made it pump all the way back in the bull market. And now when he said that uh, they ha he have no investments in Shiba and it didn't affect Shiba you know, at all and it's still growing. It kept growing from last year days and it's still growing out there more well, and more every day. Yeah, that's good and that shows that just shows that the communities are stronger than influencers, right? Yeah. Like if we if exactly. we let an influence we let an influencer uh dictate your project and that's that's the double edged sword that comes with having influencers. Like they could do something good for your project or they might not have an effect at all, right? And that's just as 
just the same as the developer paying all that money to have an influence to say something, and then it has no fucking uh, effect on the project. That's a loss for the and or a negative effect to too. Yeah, and to me, a loss is a negative effect. So uh, I thought that was good that he did. Uh, he threw uh, Shiba down. You know, he was like, you know, he didn't have any. But in this time, this day and age of, of hype and these are meme tokens, which are basically formed off hype. There's no, there's no such thing as bad publicity. So that was actually good publicity for Shib, regardless if he said he held it or not, because every time Yvonne tweets, we know that there's five or 10,000 different coins under his comments, just itching to have something said about him. Um, but then it was very strong. It was very good to see the the, uh, the Shib army stand up and say, all right, you don't want to hold our shit, but we'll bring it even more closer to your attention. And that's what they did. They took a step in the, re- the right direction mm. and, and put it right back in the face. The- um, like I'm from Canada, so it doesn't necessarily affect me. But Robinhood, if any of you are in the U.S., you know that for a trading platform, they literally like broke the trading platform with the amount of people that were asking them to list Shib. It was like four hundred thousand hit it at one time. Holy shit, that is excellent, man! I hope yeah, they list yeah, it. Just Let's go! go! <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's impressive, man. I... The other thing you got to see too, like uh, Robinhood was down a whole bunch because of the trading and stuff. Yep. But if they actually come out and say that they're putting on ship, that's going to be huge for them as well as for ship. So our, our Twitter space they're going to have to increase it. their quarter four profits just because they took that huge hit in, in Q3. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just going to make their investors and stockholders go, so what are we waiting for? This is just another influx of money that people are going to invest in this. And it'll end up helping crypto in general. Just shows what people general, what normal people can do when they put together. You know, it shows it's just one of those things in life where, you know, you get a little bit of ants, and all of a sudden you got a big ant army, and they're gonna, you know, move that rubber tree plant. You damn right. It's it's funny though because uh, I was in a space. I was in a space yesterday. And uh, it was just some people in there. And, you know, like, I don't have a problem with people who own Doge. I don't care if you own Shiba. I don't care what you own as long as it's crypto. Fuck, we're on the same team, right? But they were in there, and there was this guy was like, there was in there with Doge. And it's like, bro, you know, like, Shib's market cap could never catch Doge. And, and, and yesterday, it wasn't that close. Like, it was almost like double. Even though they were 11 and 13, or 9 and 11, respectively, on the um, top top 20 market caps. I was like, man, it is a little bit far. And then I woke up this morning, and I seen Shib's market cap, and I'm like, Holy fuck. <laughs> like Overnight. The power Overnight. of the Four AM baby. Those those markets crazy. open. <laughs> yes. Man shit, bro. Like you, you know the vibe. It's also why you can't sleep. Just for the record, you know, if anybody, you know, is like me, you can't sleep uh, if you're an investor. Suffer from the same affliction. Uh, it's insane. Yeah. It happens nah. so quick and you gotta move. I woke up this morning and I was like, holy shit, I cannot believe that they covered about seven, I think it was about seven billion dollars in market, or somewhere between three and seven billion in market cap to catch up. And I was like, oh my God, this is getting interesting, man. Like, this is really getting interesting. Because it's, it's almost like the first run of Doge when it almost, you know, when it got up in the 70s. Now you can buy in even lower and create the same kind of wealth. You know, people have been stockpiling a lot of these coins, and, you know, if you're smart, you, you could get to a penny older than sheep and, and you're going to be sitting pretty. Hey guys, listen, we got that. That's sheep, my hope. We got that sheep mm-hmm. video on YouTube. I don't know if y'all have all seen it, but it's got a hundred thousand views in a week. So if y'all can keep reposting it, Hell yeah. uh, Let's do it. that would help. I'm going to send Let's it to it. you in your DMS. Okay. Yeah. Send it on over. Well, and, and share it on the top of the banner as well. If you want. In, How do in I do that? Case, so people can see it. Um, you just click on the like uh, share button, the one that looks like an arrow, um, and then it'll put share to, and then you just click the little button at the top that shows the spaces. You know, since the topic is about the altcoins, I just want to ask, is there any possibility that Binance will be enlisting SafeMoon anytime soon? And with that, even if they do enlist in the coming time, how is that going to affect the safe moon prices? How is gonna it's going to take Binance have to have a large number of safe moon holdings so it can come on to anything. I can tell you my honest opinion. I think they should do it. Uh, and this is at no preference of whether they do it or not. But my, um, my mathematical mind understands numbers. And if B and B or if Binance holders currently 
are in the millions. Let's just say they're under five million total. Mm. Uh, Safe Moon holders through Pancake Swap are well over two and a half million. If and when Safe Moon moves to their blockchain and/or their own exchange, and these holders go with them it will drastically affect the price of BNB. And in my opinion, it would be better for Binance to hurry up, clear them as not a security, list them, and hold them there in their own hot wallet before they lose them to the, to the home, to the native. That's my opinion on it. But I have no idea what will end up happening. I don't know if it's possible. The United States is very strict now about how Binance can operate. Uh, SafeMoon is an American company, so they would have to clear. There's a document now that's required legally from um, Binance that basically it's a Miranda that states that you're not considered a security. And that can take some time for you to produce. My company is working at that as well, and that's just why I know about it. But I would imagine they're doing the same thing. I'm not speaking for SafeMoon, but I would imagine it's a very similar process.